Now we've got the presence of tenderness, then we also need to consider how long it is as well. Uh, and there are a few rules you might have heard about this, such as the less than five centimeter rule means it's likely to be a bone stress injury. Um, and whilst this does make common sense, Milgram et al. basically pointed out uh, that there's no good rationale and, and data to support this. Like it does make sense uh, in our minds, but we need something that's clinically validated if we're going to make decisions about something that is, you know, a higher risk uh, injury. And looking at that paper by Milgram et al., they gave us this really powerful rule, which is basically if it's less than 10 centimeters of tenderness, uh, it's about 22 times more likely to be a bone stress injury. And if we combine that with a hop test, it goes up to a 58 times more likely uh, probability, which is huge. This also had a 100% sensitivity. No one with a bone stress injury had no tenderness on palpation medially and no, no pain on hopping. That's extremely powerful. The problem I have with uh, how people are interpreting this study um, is that essentially we've taken it as if it's greater than 10 centimeters of tenderness, it couldn't possibly be a bone stress injury. And what's important to understand about that is yes, bone stress injuries tend to have a much shorter length of tenderness. Um, but this was only in 31 bone stress injuries according to a bone scan and none of them were a, a true stress fracture or high grade injury. The reason I'm pointing this out is because there were some that were approaching 10 centimeters. There was one patient that had uh, 10 centimeters of bony tenderness and generally higher grade injuries are going to have more swelling and more edema. If we look here at this grade 4B, which is the highest grade other than a completed fracture, um, we can see there's this big patch of swelling inside the bone on this MRI I've overlaid. And we can see compared to just a 4A, which is you know a, a half a grade below, it's not even a true grade below, there's much less swelling and edema in terms of length. And when we're talking about what causes symptoms, it's gonna be those chemical irritants and swelling, and especially along the surface of the, of the outside of the bone known as periosteal edema. Generally, high grades have longer lengths of bone marrow edema, and generally, periosteal edema is longer than the bone marrow edema because gravity pushes it out and spreads it out as well as the intramuscular and intra-compartment um, pressures. I'm pointing this out because in my clinical experience, there's a number of patients that have uh, much longer lengths of tenderness than 10 centimeters. Um, and we can see on some of their MRIs that there's subadipose and periosteal and sometimes periosteal edema that extends longer than 10 centimeters. And is a clear sign as to why they have tenderness longer than 10 centimeters. Um, the most uh, memorable case of this was a patient that I had that basically had almost 30 centimeters of posterior medial tibial tenderness. And when we look on their MRI, we can see this distinctly asymmetrical posterior medial uh, periosteal edema that extended almost the whole length of the tibia. Um, and this was due to a massive whopping uh, posterior tibial stress fracture. So understanding this is very, very important because it's not actually just the length of tenderness, but the quality of tenderness. All of these patients had distinct longer lengths of tenderness on their injured sides, but often had marked areas of increased tenderness. So the length of tenderness alone should not be relied on to solely rule out a bone stress injury because bigger injuries will have more swelling. Uh, and, more, and wider tenderness, although they probably will have a marked region of tenderness.